What is Cuban coffee? So what do people mean when they refer to Cuban coffee? Most likely, they are referring to cafecito. A cafecito is a Cuban-style coffee beverage that truly exemplifies the historic culture of Cuba. Cafecitos are iconic, distinctively bitter, topped with a dark foam known as espuma and served in demitasse cups, aka tacitas. All three of these characteristics of the cafecito are representative of the nation's rich history and the hardships, scarcity, and turmoil that the Cuban people had to endure. The drink also highlights the resourcefulness of Cubans who by necessity have needed to devise smart workarounds needed to survive ever since their world was upended during the Cuban Revolution. It's also possible they are referring to a Café Cubano. A Café Cubano, aka Cuban Shot, Cuban Pole, Cafecito, Cuban Coffee, or a Cuban Espresso is a variant of espresso that originated in Cuba. Specifically, it's a form of espresso sweetened by being whipped with brown sugar. The name itself refers to drinks that have Cuban espresso as its main ingredient, such as a café con leche. Drinking café cubanos is a popular social activity throughout Cuba as well as in American communities with a heavy Cuban-American population, such as in Tampa, the Florida Keys, and especially Miami. Traditionally, Cuban coffee tends to be brewed in mocha pots. This is an iconic coffee practice seen all over South America, Central America, the Caribbean, and Europe. These basic but ingenious pots are made of stainless steel, which sometimes contain a vibrant enamel coating, and brew coffee by having water pushed through the coffee grounds via steam. Cuban coffee is often served with espuma, the name given to sugar whipped with a moderate portion of espresso in order to produce a frothy, thick cap and it's supposed to imitate the crema found in costlier espresso drinks. The heat emitted from this process will end up hydrolyzing a portion of the sugar, producing a sweet but viscous result. However, even though espuma originated in Cuba, espuma is instead today primarily found in areas of the Cuban diaspora like Miami. Now that we've explained what Cuban coffee is, let's consider how its history contributes to its unique flavor and character. Coffee was initially introduced to Cuba in 1748 by a man named José Antonio Gelibert, French colonist that came to Cuba at the close of the 18th century after the Haitian Revolution introduced more intricate brewing methods, some of which are still being used in Cuban cafes to this day. During its heyday in the 19th and 20th century, Cuba was the chief exporter of coffee to Spain. The Robusta and Arabica beans of Cuba's coffee fields developed into an integral part of the country's economy, eventually becoming a symbol of national pride. People not only have enjoyed coffee in cafes, but these places served as a place of meeting and of cultural significance. These coffee shops, or ventanitas, spread throughout the country. During the peak of cafe culture in Havana, the city's streets were home to more than 150 cafes. The decline of Cuba's cafes started in 1959. Three years later, they took another hit from the U.S. embargo on traded goods from Cuba. Cafes endured yet another setback during the late 1980s after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Cuba was dependent on exports sold to communist nations with limited alternative outlets to export their goods. The USSR's collapse brought on a dark period for Cubans, eventually leading to the country's Great Recession. The small cups, known as taquitas, are reflective of the meager rations and coffee shortages endured by Cubans when the government strictly rationed food supplies. When the rationing occurred, each individual Cuban was allocated just four coffee ounces every 30 days. This necessitated consumption in small cups with strong brewing methods to make the coffee go farther. This preservation remains a natural approach to enjoying the beverage in Cuba today. Things perhaps reached their bleakest for the Cuban coffee industry in 2007, when the country produced a mere 7,000 bags, a bag being about 132 pounds of coffee in a year. This marked quite a difference from the 444,000 per year it used to export. However, with some government assistance, the country's output is now back to 120,000 bags of coffee per year. 
Growth in the Cuban coffee market is also steady, as reflected by the independently owned cafes which have started to appear again on various street corners. As shabby as the setting may currently be, the energy and optimism of the Cuban people are without question enduring. In addition to the cafecito, other Cuban coffee variants exist. One of them is a cortadito, which means small cut when translated from Spanish, where a little bit of milk, steamed, is poured into a coffee shot. It closely resembles cortados that are often served in Latin nations, but comes pre-sweetened. Coffee and milk, aka a café con leche, is a sugar-free espresso served aside a cup of either steamed or hot milk. It's conventionally served separately from coffee. An espresso of desired darkness gets poured into a cup of hot milk before being stirred, sometimes adding a little salt. This is a beverage traditionally consumed during breakfast and usually served with a couple of bread slices, toasted and buttered. A colada is comprised of three to six usually sweetened espresso shots, Cuban style, served inside of a cup, styrofoam, and a plastic demitasse, small. It's intended for sharing and to be drank on the go. You'll often see people enjoying one in the workplace in Cuban communities when people are taking their break. Now, let's take a look at a recipe for making your own Cuban coffee. The necessary equipment you'll need is a mixing spoon, a mocha pot, and two damatase or espresso coffee cups. The ingredients you'll need are Cuban-style coffee grounds, Café Bustelo is a brand usually available in most stores, two tablespoons of granulated sugar, and water. First, pour water into a mocha pot. The pot's bottom chamber should be filled with sufficient water to the point where it reaches the safety release valve. Next, add your coffee to the mocha pot funnel, scoop the ground coffee, and level the coffee off using your finger without compressing it. The funnel should be attached to the mocha pot and placed into the pot's bottom chamber. Now, place the pot over medium heat. Don't allow the water to heat up too quickly, as doing so could make the coffee brew too quickly and under-extract. While the mocha pot is brewing, add one teaspoon of sugar into each demitasse or espresso cup. Remove the pot from heat after completing the brewing process. Pour the coffee into a cup and vigorously stir the sugar. This will soon produce an espuma that comes out slightly frothy and thick. Do the same thing with the other cup. Serve immediately. So, what do you think about Cuban coffee? Have you tried it? If so, how was it? Let us know in the comments section below.